Good morning. We would like to thank the uh, program committee for inviting us. I'd also like to thank our investigators on behalf of the NICHD and the Pelvic Floor Disorders Network. Our work is supported by the NICHD. In women without stress urinary incontinence symptoms, prolapse surgery may cause de novo SUI in 16 to 51%. Recent studies have demonstrated effective prevention strategies, including prophylactic incontinence surgery. While these studies have advanced understanding of overall prevalence, of de novo SUI, the risk prediction for a specific patient varies based on individual characteristics. A prediction model that allows for more accurately predicting an individual's risk may further help determine the patient's preference for a concomitant continence operation. Our hypothesis was that baseline characteristics combined in a prediction model can predict an individual's risk of de novo SUI within 12 months of pelvic organ prolapse surgery. In addition, this prediction model would be more accurate than preoperative stress testing and experts' predictions. Data from the OPUS trial or outcomes following vaginal prolapse repair and mid-urethral sling were used for the development and internal validation of the prediction model. External validation utilized data from the Culpopexy and Urinary Reduction Efforts, or CARE, trial. Investigators identified 12 preoperative patient and test characteristics commonly used in the clinic to predict the risk of de novo SUI following surgery. The risk factors that were selected are listed here in the table. We hypothesized that all risk factors, except the performance of a concomitant TBT, would increase the risk of de novo SUI. The outcome for our prediction model was defined as the development of de novo SUI as determined by a response of somewhat, moderately, or quite a bit on the pelvic floor distress inventory questions 20 through 22, as these responses are highly relevant to outcomes to patients. A logistic model was fit to the data. Accuracy was measured by area under the curve. All C statistics and receiver operating characteristic curves were internally validated using 1,000 bootstrap samples. After the model was internally validated, it was externally validated using the CARE data set. The model was also compared to clinicians' predictions and with results from the preoperative prolapse reduction stress tests. To perform these latter two comparisons, a subset of 32 women were randomly selected from the OPUS data set for comparing the probability of developing de novo SUI between the model's predictions, experts, and preoperative stress test results. Our results. Of the 465 women in OPUS, 457 had SUI data available 12 months after surgery. The model had useful discrimination between women who ultimately did or did not experience de novo SUI with a concordance index of 0.73. Predicted probabilities are shown here on the x-axis and were consistent with the actual probabilities on the y-axis with tendencies of the model to slightly overpredict when the probability of developing SUI reached 50% or greater. Contrary to our original assumption, the results demonstrated that age, as age increased, a participant's risk of experiencing de novo SUI decreased. An online calculator has been created using the variables from the model for making predictions in the clinical setting, and there's a link provided here at the bottom for your use. The accuracy of the model on the entire care data set is shown here in red. Although lower than the prediction following vaginal prolapse surgery, it was significantly better than random chance in predicting whether women undergoing abdominal sacral copepexy experienced de novo SUI. The model, shown in green, was significantly more accurate than experts, shown in blue, and preoperative prolapse reduction stress test results, shown in red. Our model demonstrated good predictive accuracy with a C-statistic of 0.72,
comparing favorably with widely used Gale model for the prediction of breast cancer and the Framingham cardiovascular risk model. In summary, in women undergoing transvaginal prolapse surgery, this model provides a valid individualized risk estimate for the development of de novo SUI symptoms that performs better than subspecialty experts and a preoperative stress test. The online calculator is available for your use, and future studies should investigate include a population of women undergoing minimally invasive colpopexy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. The paper is open for discussion from the floor. Yeah, thanks. Um, could you, is it possible to go back to the slide with the internal and external validation? Sure. Can we? Because uh, I just wonder whether there's a bit of a problem there. I mean, you've shown lots of really, uh, fairly, from my point of view, advanced statistics. Uh, but um, we, you see, show the internal and the external validation. Because your internal validation gave a C statistic of 0.7 something. Was mm -hmm. that correct? And the external validation gave a C statistic of 0.6 something, mm -hmm. 0.62 or so. Mm -hmm. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe there's a biostatistician in the room who can help, but really, if you, you know, when you take that model into the wider world, you do not expect the performance that you get on internal validation. You expect the performance you get on external validation. And that is a C statistic of 0.62. And then show us again the C statistic you got from the expert prediction. So it's 0.62 versus expert prediction 0.62. Yeah. What do you make of that? Sure. <laughs> so remember that the opus population is a, is a population of patients that are going vaginal prolapse surgery. The care population was abdominal. Um, so the external validation component of this may have to do with the fact that there may be some differences in the way we perform these procedures in care. This is ultimately a birch copopexy yeah. uh, versus absolutely, uh, sling. absolutely. So, and there you're making the salient point. Mm -hmm. And the salient point here is that I'm sorry, your prediction model is virtually useless to me or to anybody else who doesn't do exactly what those people were doing whose cases got into the internal validation. And you prove the point by saying that when people do something else, mm -hmm. like abdominal versus vaginal or laparoscopic or whatever, then suddenly the performance of the model drops off so much that it's no better than expert prediction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, and we state in our conclusions that these results are most valid for those undergoing vaginal prolapse surgery. There's another question at the bottom of the floor. Okay, Karis Glazner, you're a gynecologist from Aberdeen. Um, surely the point is, how, no matter how good your model is for predicting who is and isn't going to become incontinent or uh, any other method of doing it, you will always sometimes get it wrong and always, sometimes, therefore women will have unnecessary continent surgery. And so exposing those women to unnecessary risk. Surely Correct. it is a much more clinically safe thing to do to operate on the woman, fix her prolapse, and then afterwards find out whether she still has significant stress urinary incontinence that still requires for example a, a minimally invasive tape surgery uh, because that way you will avoid uh, you will you will avoid danger. You, you know, first, uh, first do no harm. Mm -hmm. So so whether your model is good or not uh, is is not the point. It's it's what it means for the women. I think. I certainly think that doing a staged approach to fixing uh, de novo SUI is one reasonable option. Un unfortunately, a lot of patients don't like that. I mean, they they prefer to go to the operating room and get it fixed in a single episode. And so we're left to make a decision as to whether or not to do something about that in that particular patient. Um, and again, as sort of the, the model would suggest, using the model's predictions, we're better at guessing uh, using the model than we would be without it. Well, that's true. But um, still, if you explained properly to the woman that if she has an unnecessary tape operation, she has a higher risk of this, that, and the other complication, perhaps then she would think, oh, I don't want to run that risk right. if I don't have to. 
perhaps yeah. it's how it's explained to the women that makes them think that. I, agree, I completely agree with you, and I think the point of this model is not to tell you what to do, it's to provide the data to the patient so that they can decide with you on what to do. And that goes with uh, you know, accounting for what the benefits would be, in this case of potentially reducing the risk of SUI versus those risks, which this model does not account for. Thank you. Elise Day from the U.S. I think it's this information is some of the best that we have from these trials on occult stress urinary incontinence, and we do seem to have this debate at the AUA and at ICS every year. But we have to think about what information is going into the model, as as everybody's pointing out. And one thing that's often ignored is the fact that you can place a pessary on a patient. And it's common sense. You can send them home with it and see if there's leakage with the pessary in place with mm -hmm. the prolapse reduced in their everyday activities. And mm -hmm. this has only been studied in one trial that was about 48 hours, and I think we should do more studies on that as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a reasonable uh, variable that could have potentially been useful here. We simply didn't have it in these data sets, but yeah. it would be worth looking at in the future. Yeah. We, we certainly need something better than the stress test. Mm -hmm. which this data would, these data would show. Yes. May I? Yes, I would like to support what the, this lady just said. Of course, the, you know, we just put a piss right now. We, we, do a, we, we replace the prolapse. The, the problem with that just is that it happens so often that we actually don't fix the prolapse. <laughs> the patient may be happy, but the anatomy hasn't changed much. So, for example, if you do, a, say, you do a sacrospinal scopopexy or even a laparoscopic procedure, there's lots and lots of anterior compartment recurrence after that. And if there is lots of anterior compartment prolapse, then you will still have the urethral kinking that stops the patient from leaking. So if we assess the, the effect of having some kind of procedure on stress incontinence, we've got to be clear about what we're, what we're actually seeing, what we're actually measuring. We need to be sure whether the prolapse is fixed or not. Otherwise, it makes no sense to put patients into some database and then look at outcomes because there's this massive confounder of failed prolapse surgery. Yes, sir. Hi, Mark Slack, Cambridge, United Kingdom. Um, the whole problem about this using pessaries to predict um, goes on the hypothesis that it's kinking and unkinking that's causing the incontinence. It may well be neuropraxia. It may have absolutely nothing to do with the mechanics. And one does see a spontaneous resolution of occult urinary incontinence by six months in probably as many as half of the patients. So I think it's possibly a bit naive to think we can predict using um, poor predictors like um, a, a pessary. Yeah, I mean, I simply can't comment on how accurate that prediction is. What we can comment on is that, you know, the model did perform better in these data compared to experts' best guess, and they had the results from the preoperative stress test available to them when they made those guesses. Eric, just a brief question. Did you rule out uh, the trusher rover activity because we know that some patients with huge prolapse has uh, the trusher rover activity, and this could be a confounding factor in the preoperative evaluation and so on? So, I mean, in the information you introduced in the model, did you rule out the trusher rover activity? So, no, we did not use uh, your dynamic finding of the trusher rover activity in the model. What we did was we did use subjective reported urgency urinary incontinence. And that, that factor uh, did not uh, play out as one of the major predictors uh, when combined with all of the other factors. I think it's important to understand here that all the, of the table of factors that we listed, those are all important when you look at them in isolation. But w when you combine all of these factors together, which ones of these create the most accurate combination? You can't look at them necessarily in individual isolation. So it may be that subjective urgency, uh, urge urinary incontinence, uh, is, is, is somewhat of a predictor, but when combined with all the others, is less so. Marie Elström Eng, uh, Norway. Uh, I just want to uh, point out that the pessary is not a good predictor for for de novo, predicting de novo incontinence, at least in several studies that has been shown. So, so and, and reducing the prolapse with any other type of like forceps or anything, mm -hmm. it's not a good predictor. So if we want to know, we need to do it in, other, yeah. in another way. As per, sorry, as per the literature review recently, there is a trend that uh, the treatment for the occult 
uh, U.S. trade in country is more conservative. So I think it's quite possibly uh, possibly the the all the the, uh, the uh, colleagues who raised the question is is quite reasonable and uh, makes sense. Maybe you can leave it up to the major surgery. And now the anti incontinence is very, is minimally invasive. It's uh, 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 quickly uh, recovered, and the, the period of, of recovery is short, yep. and the patient feel better yep. after uh, after the, the operation. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I'm hearing uh, some support for certainly not doing anti or continent surgery at the same time of prolapse surgery. That is a very reasonable approach. Again, the, uh, I find the model most useful actually in those circumstances uh, because you can give the patient a, a fairly uh, accurate number of yeah, yeah, how yeah, likely that, they that are to true, leave. true, because yeah. we still, uh, it's still con controversial what way is the best way to predict the occult. Correct. You may be stressing at the present time. Yes. I agree with you. I'm not trying to start a debate about pessaries, but I do think it's important to think about what information we might be missing. And the pessary has not been shown to be predictive during urodynamics, mm -hmm. but it's only been one small trial in which the pessary has been studied in an ambulatory home trial. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um,